Hello, all you Merchant Center Mastery people. Uh, it is good to have you here. Um, it's been a crazy week. We have had leads coming in left and right, which is very cool. Uh, I suspect that may have something to do with like the economy. It makes people a little bit nervous. So everyone's just kind of like looking around to see, is my agency the problem? And so, um, so if your agency like that actually does typically happen in this sort of thing, at least from what I've seen, although I've not done this through multiple recessions. So we'll see. So let's talk feed updates and feed edits. So this is one of those things that one of my team members brought and said, you should do a video on this. And I agree because in my opinion, it's actually kind of confusing. And what's confusing is when you make an update through one of the many ways that your feed can be updated, like which of those edits stands, which of those edits actually gets finalized. Because if you think about it, there's actually a number of things that can change how your Google Shopping ad will ultimately look in kind of its finalized state, right? And in SERPs, search engine result pages, right? You could have the feed itself that impacts things. You could have your supplemental feed. You could have feed rules. You can have automatic item updates that Google's doing. You can have individual product edits now where you can go in and edit something. And so like which of those when you make changes, like what happens there, right? Like what overrules what? So the purpose of this video is to tell you when you make what changes, here's what actually overrules everything. So the key is to remember, Google automated things have the final, final, final say, but from there on, you go from most specific to most general, most specific to most general. So what will your Google shopping product look like in its finalized state? Well, the most final edit that will be impacted is like the Google automated stuff. So maybe the Google badges like free shipping or something like that. From there, it's automatic item updates. Google crawls your page and if they see something with price or stock status, then they will change that no matter what anything else that you've done in Merchant Center. Absolutely anything you've done in Merchant Center, Google will change that in the automatic item update state and, and put it in the finalized state. From there, it goes to individual product edits. If you change your individual product edit, that's the highest of hierarchy for changes that will actually persist through. From there, it goes down to feed rules. Feed rules then circumvent supplemental feeds, which then finally circumvent the feed itself, all right? So that's, that's kind of how it works, the process. I think this is confusing, so let's start from the ground up. Let's look at this, all right? So let's go into one of our accounts here. And I want to talk you through actually what this looks like, all right? Okay, so in every merchant center, you have your products. And let's click through into product. And what you'll see at the bottom is you will see all of the ways, all of the things that are impacting your product, all the things that are impacting your product. And your final attributes tell you this is everything that's going on. And what happens is that all of the other things that could be influencing your product are also listed there, but the final attributes have the say so. So if you have multiple things editing the product, then like, you know, what determines what your final attributes will be? Well, again, it goes to that hierarchy of structure, right? So initially you have your primary feed that comes in and this, this is how you're initially sending the information that may be from Shopify, from the content API, it may be through a crawl, through data feed watch or feednomics, whatever it might be, you have this feed, it enters. Then, then you may have a supplemental feed that changes some things. Sometimes we'll do supplemental feeds. We'll probably do other videos in the future of, of the reasons why to use supplemental feeds or feed rules, but supplemental feeds are really great for things like, let's just say sales price or promotion IDs because you can go in and just say, hey, for these various maybe randomized products, we want this exact promotion ID or this exact sales price, and the sales price effective dates and all that. And you can enter that into your supplemental feed. That then, that then will influence, um, and I think I have that example here. So here we have our raw feed attributes, which is from that direct product feed. Then we have our supplemental feed that is impacting that. And here's where it gets a little tricky Here's where it gets a little tricky because what you'll see from this promotion ID that I have here is that that does not match this promotion ID. And that's because I wanted to show you, I have a feed rule set up for that promotion ID. So I have a feed rule set up for that promotion ID. This doesn't tell you in the current Google Merchant Center UI, it doesn't actually tell you when individual product edits or feed rules are impacting your data. At least in this specific view that I'm looking at right now, Google has made some changes now where increasingly they're showing if, if you edit things. 
if you edit things. And in fact, just for fun, let's show that how we can edit that here. Because again, remember that an individual product edit overrides a feed rule, which overrides a supplemental feed, which overrides the feed itself. So let's go down to that promotion ID here. Let's go down to that promotion ID where we have the Zato test. And now let's say product edit. All right, now let's say product edit. We can even add in a promotion ID. So now we're gonna go ahead and save that. So we save that individual product edit and then it takes a little bit of time for Google to uh, run and refresh that product. But then you can actually see, then you actually can see that there is an edited version. So that edited version right here is when you've individually changed the product. You've individually changed the product itself with that little pencil option. That overrides all the other stuff. Just keep in mind, when you have feed rules applied, you do not see that. And that's so important, I'm gonna say it again and I'll say it loudly. If you have feed rules applied, you do not see them in this current UI and that's really stupidly annoying, annoying. If you ever have problems with like, why is a certain product showing this title or something and I can't figure it out, the first place you should go increasingly is always check feed rules because someone probably like three years back set some random feed rule that never got pulled off and it's changing like this one product's title and you had no idea why and you want to change that. Be but because a feed rule will override a supplemental feed and a product feed. However, the initial, the individual edits will override the feed rules. If you are confused, then that's because this is all very confusing. So uh, let me go actually into the feed rule and just show you that. And I, I set up within this, I just set up this like, Zato test feed rule just for fun, just to show you here what it looks like. Because remember, you go into the feed itself, you go into feed rules, and then I set a unique feed rule ID for that promotion ID for that specific that specific item for our set to Zato test, right? Um, and then you can see within here, this is a feed rule, is whenever you have a supplemental feed, you gotta make sure that it actually is assigned to that feed and that will show up in your feed rules. So we want that there, cause we're showing that, we want to pull from that supplemental feed when applicable, but then this specific promotion ID overrides the supplemental feed. So um, that's, that's how feed works. That's how feed edits work. Hopefully that gives you more insight into when you actually go in, like how should you edit products on that? Some point in the future, we'll go into you know feed rule edits and supplemental feeds and all that. But at least I thought it was helpful for you just to know like when you go in to edit something, like what is impacting what. And hopefully this video was helpful for that. So thanks again. Uh, I'm Kirk, Merchant Center Mastery. May the auctions be ever in your favor. Thanks much. Have a great day.